um, honoring in bulk yesterday through ritual and ceremony and prayer and just feeling the energetics of that welcoming to springtime. And I look out my window and literally it was just like snowing to like sleeting to snowing. I'm like, right. Spring is here. <laughs> it might not have evidence on the outside, but um, yeah, it's, it's definitely the cycle has turned and we can notice that even if it's the temperature hasn't changed is the longer nights. I know here, at least in um, outside of Asheville, North Carolina, it's getting, um, it's not getting dark to like 630 or something, 6, 630. So there's longer, longer days uh, inviting in what we know is coming and and really what I was guided yesterday is like, how do we tend to those inner fires and how do we also engage with Bridget if um, that resonates with you as an archetype, as um, a being consciousness to work with of, um, at least in the Celtic traditions, she was um, also tended to uh, the, sorry, there's, I'm getting distracted by the chats. Um, can y'all hear me? Okay. Okay, good. Okay, good. I was like, am I just talking? Um, you know, so it's tending to the inner fires is tending to what wants to be birthed, what wants to be created from what you've gained in the wisdom of the cold, long, dark nights. And especially this fall, this winter so far, you know, has been globally a pretty intense one of um, a lot of unknowns. I mean, we're always living un unknown and now it's, it's amplified, um, or at least our awareness is that we don't know what's going to be coming down the line. And to how do we create that sovereignty? How do we create that line of truth so that our compass, no matter what's going on on the external, that we have that uh, frequency, not just in concept, but an actual feeling of embodiment. And so, you know, it's been interesting um, for, I think, many people, um, maybe you, maybe not, wherever you land on your experience right now is you know, the portals that are available right now in this turning of the wheel in this time of living in prophecy on the planet right now. And, you know, it's clear that so it's tough for so, so many, and really it's tough on the collective, no matter where you're at, no matter where you're living, no matter what your situation is, the collective matrix is, has been tightening. It's been just, we've been bombarded as we all have experienced. Um, you know, and so right now, though, there is just as much opportunity for awakening and for miracle consciousness, because within this shakeup is not only are these intense energies coming in um, and also being amplified, um, the shadow worlds are being amplified, but also the, the reality that we can create not our reality from like we're going to spiritually bypass, but we create our inner reality. And this is the moment that. Um, you know, especially those who've been on the path for a long time, it's like the training is for now, you know, like all of the meditations, the, this, the, that, like it's now, like it's, 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 that's why we're here. And I was speaking to a friend who, um, is in Costa Rica and living there and, you know, speaking, if I thought I was going to leave the country or not. And cause that has been on the curiosity, if we're going to stay in the U S depending how things go, go down, um, and we were discussing, it seems to be, you know, it's, it's the question for, I think, a lot of um, folks of, you know, are you guided in this time period as a light worker? And I don't use that, I, I don't use that phrase often, because I think it can be, um, well, it is what it is. It's just been thrown around a lot. Um, but are you here to anchor the frequency of your own soul, the frequency of sovereignty, the frequency of joy and love, like within the matrix, within the, um, the intensity, you know, and are you, or, and, or for those that can, are you guided to, you know, hold that in a different place? At least, um, I am speaking more of, um, folks here in the U S as well, even though I know it's global. So it's an interesting, I think, time for all of us to really um, get clear on 
how to even access our sovereign truth without all the noise, because the noise is just going to get louder and prettier. And, you know, when I say prettier, I mean like masked of like, and here's this and here's this, like, we really just, you got to dig deep to see like what resonates within your body, what resonates within your truth. Um, and that means even letting go of your concepts of what even last year, this time last year, you might've been sitting in of what um, your truth is. So I, this time period is such a, a precious time and portal, especially for the seven days starting on um, February 1st, the Invulc uh, portal to really invite in that sacred fire that's going to illuminate what you're here to create. Because, you know, um, and I spoke with a lot of people all over the world, um, we could get stuck in this overwhelm of what's next, who knows, you know, all the things, all the fears, the V word should or should not like all the things, you know, and you can also get really uh, focused on what am I, what am I offering? What am I here to create in my own family? What am I here to create in the world around me? And focusing on that and letting that be the energetic that moves you forward breath by breath is like, that is the, the changing of the tides, you know, and it's, it's not, um, as I spoken before, I'll probably sound like a um, broken record, but we're the ones that are creating the new world and the new frequency and pockets all over the world. And so we're the ones that it's just like, no, we're going to hold the frequency of unity and love and gratitude and, and also being able to call a spade a spade. You know, there's, um, I've spoken to a lot of, um, especially women who are in a detox process right now. And a lot of it has to do, um, with gallbladder, liver, different things, because it's like where we've held anger, where we've not been able to express anger, where we've, you know, been, um, been a people pleaser. Because all those things, all those stories, all those programs, whether it was passed down by great, great grandma or not, it's like, we can recognize that we can uh, work with it. And then it's, it's truly time of like, and I'm a sovereign soul that incarnated on this planet with my own soul contract. And it's time to really anchor that in. And not just in this way of like, oh, because we have to save the world. It's not that at all. But you do get to save your life experience and get to create that. And you do get to save it from, keep getting chills, from what others are going to dictate is or is not possible. And once we can really sit in that sovereignty, and it's, and it's fucking hard, I'm not saying it's not, regardless of what the news is saying, regardless of this, you know, it's, and especially for empaths watching when you can stay in your center and then you talk to a friend or you talk to a family member and they're like, did you see on CNN and the blah, 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 blah. And all of a sudden you're in this like matrix of like, what the fuck, um, whatever the trigger is. And maybe it's not, maybe it's like, okay, well, you know, I, I use it as a practice to like tap into like the, the mainstream narrative and the stories that are told and see like, where can I, where do I get lit up in my chakras? Where do I get lit up in my energy system? And not to ignore what's going on. We can't ignore it of um, in the world or um, what's happening around, but it's like using it as a practice instead of it using you, right? So it's like, we get to be that like, ooh, okay, this is interesting. I'm really triggered in this way. Oh, this is interesting. I feel like I don't have agency right now. Why is that? What's been put in place for you not to have agency? And, you know, it's, it's just truly looking at what has always been, but now it's more amplified as the external world is your internal mirror, right? And how do we um, engage with those parts of self? How do we engage Right. And looking at like the matrix and the external as truly that like, oh, here we are in training grounds. We might have, especially those on the call right now, we might can remember so deeply those times in, you know, the sacred groves and the temple space in Avalon in you know, um, in Egypt, all the things. Right. And even if it's not a visceral memory, but we we have ancient memory from our ancestors of what it was like to live in intimate community that was centered around um, remembering and not just remembering because they were so more connected, but honoring. 
And so, you know, it's like, how do we create that within this moment? Because that's also what I have found. The doors um, are so wide open for that. Just as much as the chaos is like, wow. Um, so is also the reckoning, you know, and um, it's pretty amazing. I feel, I feel really uh, excited about this time. Of course I get anxious, you know, I'm like, Oh God, are we in martial law? Do I need to like leave the country or, you know, it's blah, blah, blah. Like all the stories that can, can happen. And then it's like, no, it's like trusting that even if our worst case scenarios, whatever that is for you, cause it might not be the same as what's worst case scenario for me. Even if that occurs, trusting impeccably that you are always guided that you are always given the answers. You're always given the like nudge to listen to your intuition. And so I guess that this whole, you know, like spiel is um, really comes down to doing whatever it takes to be able to have access that you trust your intuition impeccably because that is your gateway to know your truth and know and listen and hear when to take action, when to be still, when to go into a situation you might not normally have put yourself in, you know, six months ago and radiate sovereignty, radiate love, radiate gratitude, you know, be the medicine. So many people are so scared. I get tears thinking about it. The stories I hear, the emails I get, so many people, and it, you might be one of them, are alone. They're scared. They don't know what the fuck's going to happen. None of us do. But if we can be the medicine... And if we can be the medicine in our own experience, we can be the medicine in this sacred time, which if you're on this call and if you've been with me a little bit, you know that you're here beyond your own bubble. You know that you're here to really um, be that medicine and be that light. And I say that because, you know, it's, I really, in my own energetic space, um, in magnetism, in my prayers, call in folks that want to have sovereignty and truth in themselves, but also so you can be the medicine in the world. And, um, and you're doing it. You know, the choices you make every moment. Oh, one more thing and we'll get started. Um, just dropping in really clear is um, be aware of synchronicity, especially in this next, um, well, it's going to increase, but there's, there's this time period right now and a portal opening up um, and ask for synchronicity. You know, I know that we can be aware of it and look for it in different moments, but when we really start asking, like uh, for synchronicity about X, Y, and Z, there's this opening um, of there's just these, there's light codes going on, your guys, this and that. There's just so many, it's kind of like that, um, like those cartoons with like the cheddar cheese. I don't know if it's cheddar cheese, but like the holes in the cheese, right? At the matrix, there's so many holes that energies that have not been able, higher frequencies, higher, like different support, able to get into the 3D world right now because there has been that, it's that we're in the um, shakeup. And so it's such a precious time and um, your guides are also just like synchronicity, synchronicity, allow and ask for even more synchronicity because it's happening all the time. We can just not put our awareness there. Um, but to put the prayers of like, I'm ready for the synchronicity of X, Y, and Z, and then let go and see what happens. Um, Melissa, there's been so many for you without asking and even documented in the book. Amazing. The more we can, I, more we can write down the synchronicities, the blessings, the more we're just going to tune our awareness, right? You know, that, that feeling when it's like you either are looking for a car or you're going to get a car and all of a sudden that car is everywhere. Like if you just never noticed it before, um, or your friend got a new car and then you think, yeah, it's, it's just that same thing. Right. So it's just like where energy or thought goes, energy flows. So um, when we can especially write down and stack up your um, your celebrations, it could be that, you know what, I 
thought I was going to do X, Y, and Z today. Instead, I stopped. I talked to a friend who really needed me and was there for them instead. Cause I think sometimes so much the mind is programmed to, you know, stack up what we didn't do, stack up the negative. I mean, we're just, we have neurologically the negative bias in our primal brain. That's how we survived. So when we can really shift that and then especially writing it down, because then you're engaging your right brain uh, into the left brain. So you're putting it into form is write down your celebrations for the day. You know, some people say gratitudes or whatever um, you want to, uh, whatever vibration works for you is um, because the mind too wants to see what all like the to-do lists, especially in the Western world, like our fucking to-do lists, you know, and we might not have emailed, like, for instance, I did not email y'all yesterday. I swore I was going to get this email out before today. So you could have the zoom link on time and some other shit went down that I really needed to be present for and with and to. And instead of going to bed, like I could be like, oh, another thing, where's my VA? I need help <laughs> or all the things is um, it's like celebrating. Like, it's like, what is truly important? Y'all got on Zoom or the ones that wanted to come and it worked out, you know? And so really taking time to rewire your, um, patterns in your mind is going to really also support your awakening and support the consciousness that is you of your soul landing in your body in a way that feels um, more graceful instead of crunchy. Okay. I'll miss Savannah with Opal. Puppies and kitties and screams. I will get ADD every moment. You're so precious. Oh, and there's a baby too. Babies, puppies, and kitties. Not that I don't love seeing all of you else, but it's just like, what? Okay. So loves, let's dive in. And so for today, um, just like normal, we're going to start tuning in with the breath and it's going to be a guided process and also a, a gift that's coming in from um, working with the guides. So however you can receive and relax and open So while you're starting to tune in and allowing the breath to open up that pathway to drop in, just getting curious, just letting the question be posed to your field and notice what comes up, but asking yourself the question, excuse me, what do you want? What is that desire that might be stirring just out of conscious awareness that's ready to come forth? What, what do you want? What do you desire to birth, to create? And again, we don't have to know the answers but beginning the process of asking the questions will allow the answer to be revealed. Just noticing how your breath is this morning. How's your body? What 
Where's your mind at? Does it feel a little bit like in a loop? Get ready for some calm. And collectively, let's take a couple in breaths and on the out breath, on the exhale, we're gonna sigh, make some noise, settle in. So inhaling. Ah. <sighs> Inhaling, perhaps letting the sigh come from your heart. <sighs> Inhaling one last time, allowing this time the sigh to come from your bones. And relax. As we sit at the spiritual fire together at the sacred council, we get a deep gratitude for this gathering. This remembering, this communion with self and soul and community. In the next few breaths, just taking some time to summon yourself to yourself. You can say I in your full name. Summon myself to myself through all lifetimes, all timelines, all realities. And then relax and receive the gathering of your energy. It might be thinking about what's next. It might be with your kids at school. Just taking a good few breaths to collect yourself here and now. Yeah, I know. Anyone that may be new on the call, I will be making sounds while working vibrationally, energetically in the collective field to help transform the energy as well as amplify what wants to be amplified. And bringing your awareness to your solar plexus, the third chakra center right below your heart, right in the belly. And just notice what you notice. To this energy center, your inner fire, does it feel a little bit damp? Does it feel like it's overheated? It's our place that we digest life, we digest specifically our emotions, or we could be digesting other emotions. A lot of digestive issues come from we keep trying to digest 
stuff that's not ours. I'm feeling connected to the earth beneath you as energy starts to shift and move. even say inwardly or outwardly, I claim, I command that any energy that is not mine, that is not serving, leave my body and being right now at this time. Hiya, hiya, hiya. Ah! Notice it activates any part of the self that says, but if I don't digest it, if I don't carry it, especially around emotions, who will? There's some energies around that. Especially for caretakers, healers, mamas, grandmas. Furry baby mamas. Good. And then go one or two layers deeper. So still having focus right in the solar plexus. Almost like there's doorways or gates and you sink a little bit deeper to even the deepest place of your power, of your fire. There's different fires on different levels of your energy field around the center. So we're just gonna go a, a deeper level. Notice how this fire is doing. Sometimes we might have superficial layers that have more access to our fire, but we burn out quickly. So this is the deeper ojas or the prana, the chi. So imagining or visualizing this inner flame at the deepest layer that your consciousness can go right now. Ha. Ha. And linking this inner fire to the sacred fires that your ancestors tended, the well ones during this time. It's linking to the holy fire. Just notice what happens when we invite in the spiritual fire of those that remember that live in our blood and our bones.
Allowing this inner fire, this deep, deep, deep inside your belly and your center of the depth of your power from a soul level. So the outer layers of the field is more of our personality power, but we're really asking for the inner fire of our soul power to ignite, to wake up or to brighten, to amplify. So connecting in to your soul fire and receive. Allowing the energy from your soul, the well ones, to fan the flames. And asking, what does this inner fire need? What does your soul fire need to be fed, to be nourished, to be amplified, to assist you in your life and creation and standing in your truth in your own sovereignty and digesting properly your emotions. What comes up? What does this inner soul fire need? And allow your inner fire to be fed by your own gratitude and partnership and intimacy that there's this dance between you and the sacred inner fire of your soul. allowing to get brighter and warmer. You might start to feel the temperature of your body rise. You might start to feel energy move in your heart as the flames get brighter. Whew. I have you. And we're gonna, gonna connect so this inner fire, your soul fire on the deepest level, connecting in to the great central sun, the spiritual sun. Your mind doesn't have to know where that is. We're just gonna connect into the heart, the fire of the divine, the aspect of light. sun connecting to the great central sun allowing that energy to come into your field your upper centers all the way into your body right into the solar plexus tickling the top of your head your crown the petals unfurl as the sun the spiritual sun touches your energy, touches your body. <sighs> Allowing this bright, powerful energy to come all the way into that central channel to the spiritual soul sun in your body. And then amplify with your intention
Good. And from the inner fire, the inner sun, inner solar plexus, connecting to the heart of the earth, her inner fire, her inner flame, the center of her belly. And feeling the communication. So it's not just like, oh, there it is. But what's the communication? And all good relationships has a giving and receiving to be an Aini, sacred reciprocity. So saying hello to the center of the earth. And then listen. What's the response? Offering your gratitudes and then listen. Feel, sense. And feeling your whole central channel, central column, just from the base of the spine all the way to the top of the head. Just light up with more vitality, more warmth from this activation of your own inner flame and your own inner fire connected to the earth. And up from your soul light, a foot above the head and right into the great central sun. The light of the divine. And allowing all intentions to drop and relax and receive. Allowing yourself to be in the flow of grace, of light, of warmth, creativity, joy, rebirth. I'm taking these last few moments to thank any guides, any ancestors that showed up in your field today. And if there was a message, if you caught a message, you know, you can go back, have a tea date to go back and listen deeper. There might be, I'm feeling that at least a few of you, there's some um, good medicine here to go back and revisit. And gratitude to your own body, your own heart, your own soul, mind for showing up. And breathing into the heart, the front of the heart and the back of the heart. And allowing your awareness to also notice all the hearts that are lighting up on this call and those who will listen later across the globe. The grid of light and remembering sovereignty gets stronger and stronger. May we be the good medicine in our daily walk. May we offer our presence as healing to ourselves, our families, and our communities. May we take refuge into our sacred temple within. May we be a force of light and healing in the world at this time. Whew. With deep, deep gratitude. I close the sacred time together. And so it is.
So mote it be. Taking a deep breath into your full body, breathing all the way down into your toes, your fingers, <sighs> moving your shoulders, your neck, whatever feels appropriate and good at this time. <sighs> Thank you all so much. I'd love to hear if you felt the sacred fires, anything, if anyone wants to share anything. Try to make it as much that we're all in sacred circle together. And there was something that came up. Oh, love you. Love you all. And you're so welcome. It's such an honor and pleasure. And one of my favorite things for the week is these Wednesdays and You're in the fire. Yeah. So tend to the inner fires, tend to, you know, the buddings of creation that um, might just get the first shimmerings. Um, and yeah, you know, it's, it's time to really tend to what is important. And um, oh, next month, which I'll announce a lot more is where um, I'm going to be offering a seven days um, deep purification and amplification process in consciousness, which I'm getting prepared for. It's going to be super juicy. And that'll be seven days, be about 90 minutes, an hour to 90 minutes in the mornings. Um, the replay will, of course, be available. And um, another quick announcement, I'm going to be moving um, groups into Telegram. So I'm going to be um, not doing any more Facebook groups. And those are all announcements that I don't really feel like doing at the end because I want you all to just stay. So I'll send out the email and all the things and, um, oh, good. So glad. Good. Fires were lit. And, oh, so one thing, um, is to, to find that line. So if you feel like you're in the wobble or even if you're like physically having digestive issues is to um, ignite um, the, the fire of Pachamama. And I mean, it's always ignited, but to bring your awareness to um, the earth's uh, belly and the fire and link it with your own fire in here. Um, and then go into the great central sun and just let yourself allow, you can do it laying down or sitting up. So similar to what we just did, um, but it really helps. It's, it's quite amazing how that can just be your like, okay, here we get back in alignment and, and then move your body. So we don't have time um, necessarily on these calls, but it's always a good idea to play a song and just stay as much in your inner process as possible, but move it through your form, like see where it goes into, you can shake, get it down, shake your booty and really get the physicality of the spiritual work we're doing. Um, and that'll help um, to really stabilize the, um, the inner pillar and Again, so the third chakra, the inner fires, especially on the soul level is how we digest um, emotions, how we digest life. So often, especially empath sensitives, healers, mamas, all of it, we're digesting so much shit that's not ours, right? And so that's where it can then get wonky and we're like, I can't access my own feelings, yada, yada, or digestives just, um, on the physical show up. So, um, just really take that moment to realign will be really helpful. All right. I love you all and have a wonderful week and I'll see you next time.